Jones now at Bell Direct for you in Sydney. Lee and welcome. The data uh, in the mix today, quite a swing factor for this market out of China. Carson, mm. absolutely. Initially this morning, obviously, we saw some pretty heavy losses following those negative leads that we had coming from Wall Street. And of course, those falling oil prices really continuing to wreak havoc across markets and obviously still seeing that energy sector the worst performer. But as you say, at about 1 p.m. today, when we had that China trade data coming through, obviously beating expectations and of course, those imports coming through at record highs certainly has provided a boost to the market and also to that materials sector in general. Although we are still seeing that energy sector, the materials sector, as well as the financial sector, the three worst performers on the market today. But we have actually managed to recover some of those earlier losses. Uh, we were trading down about 0.8%, recovering about half a percent after that data coming through. But seeing those oil prices continuing to weigh, of course, overnight, we saw mostly lower commodity prices coming through. Uh, we saw iron ore, copper, aluminium, nickel all down over 1% or so. But of course, on the other side, we saw gold up about 1% and certainly seeing a lot of those gold uh, stocks continuing to provide a bit of a bright spot. Volumes today I think are continuing to be very light and should uh, expect to be for the remainder of the day. Obviously this holiday trading still continuing mm. but hoping that we will be able to maintain some of this momentum and even pick up even further uh, coming into the afternoon's trade. Let's talk Northern Star today rallying almost 5%. Some good drilling results. What, what's at stake here? That's right, Carson. So obviously benefiting off the back, um, back, back of uh, stronger gold prices. But of course today they have announced some high-grade drilling results coming out of their Paulson's gold mine over in WA. This was actually the first gold mine that was acquired by Northern Star. And the results that have come out today are actually the best they've got to date. So expecting that this will actually lead to a significant increase in some of those resource estimates and also the mine life of that Paulson's mine. So I think this really underpins the future now um, of this high grade low cost gold mine so very positive and certainly seeing uh, investors responding very well to this news today uh, clearly that 50 million dollar exploration budget that they have in place is actually helping uh, to support a lot of these discoveries and really follows quite a, a long string of very good news that's come out from the, the company over 2014 we saw the share price up a huge 90 percent or so so it really just continues to go from strength to strength uh, at the beginning of December, we saw that they made quite a significant discovery at their White Feather project ne uh, near Kalgoorlie. Prior to that, they um, announced a series of high-grade drilling results at their Jundi gold mine. And of course, across 2014, we also saw them uh, acquiring quite a number of gold mines. So certainly continuing their growth prospects there. It is now the second largest gold miner uh, listed on the ASX. So very positive. We actually quite like the fundamentals. We do believe um, there is some potential for further growth there, particularly given the fact that they are planning some further deeper drilling over coming months and that potentially will lead to some further exploration success. So despite a bit of volatility in those gold prices, we certainly do like the outlook and think some of those underlying fundamentals look quite strong. And that line could well be used, could it not, in, re in regards to BT Investment Management, looking at some of the uh, broker coverage on this uh, in terms of uh, you know, a strong Q1, uh, the outlook, despite again volatility generally in equity markets, okay, a short term pause in, in the price action here, but longer term, how are you reading it? Absolutely, Carson. So we certainly still remain very positive uh, in terms of the long-term outlook for the stock, um, despite some of that news that's come through today. Although, if we look at that um, funds under management that's come through today for the December quarter, it did actually look like there was an increase across all of their businesses. Their their total funds under management was up about 5.4% across their BT investment uh, division. It was up um, about 2.6%, and across that Joe Hambro business, it was up close to 10. So certainly very positive there, but I think investors potentially reacting negatively today in terms of some of those Joe Hambro performance fees, where, which um, actually came in quite significantly lower than the prior corresponding period. They were actually about 67% mm. lower, but as you say, nonetheless, despite seeing a bit of weakness in that share price, the outlook still very much looks strong. Uh, we saw a very strong full year result coming through back uh, in October. The stock's been up about 10% since then, and we actually do 
do believe that there is quite a strong and robust growth expected to continue, particularly as that Joe Hambro business uh, continues to mature. And of course, in addition to that, that BT investment management profitability is expected to continue growing with some uh, new high margin pro products coming online mm -hmm. and some of those uh, lower margin mature products actually rolling off. So it actually does remain one of our top picks within that mm -hmm. wealth management space and certainly in line with a, a number of other broker calls as you say.